This is a series I did on reindeer herding. I shot it in two nights in between my leaving the news miner and taking my university teaching job over the summer. I went out to Nome and stayed with some University of Alaska Fairbanks researchers who were working on, still there, the reindeer project, <clears throat> and photographed at Larry Davis's corral in Nome. There's a long history of reindeer herding, and I don't have a ton of time on this recording, but the reindeer originally brought over in 1892 by Sheldon Jackson, who was a Presbyterian, I think, missionary, and one of the things, his goals was to bring reindeer from Siberia, where they were used as a herd animal. They're very genetically close to caribou, but caribou, of course, are wild, and reindeer are domesticated, sort of, um, in Lapland, northern Europe, or Siberia. So Jackson brought these reindeer over and started some herds in Alaska as a way for natives to have, who were, who were being settled or who were settling down into villages more up in their nomadic life of chasing subsistence food. And Jackson's idea was, here's a herd crop similar to caribou that you can butcher and eat, you can make clothes out of, you can sell, you know, a way to give a local economy to Native Alaskans, to um, particularly Eskimo, to use in their new villages and um, or the ways life was changing for them. So he brought over these reindeer and there are a couple of tries, but eventually got them going. There's like I say, there's a long history. And let me let me tell you, this is taken from a little helicopter that the owner now. <laughs> At this point in Alaska's history, only native Alaskans can own reindeer herds. There are about 14 herds. And they kind of roam wild most of the year, sort of like caribou, but they're gathered uh, once a year, or they were, during these pictures for de-antlering. There's a market in Asian culture for reindeer antler as a, quote, medicinal, unquote, quote again, I say aphrodisiacal, unquote, um, medicine. And the antler are cut off in the spring when after they've grown, early summer. They're full of blood supply. They don't hurt. They don't have nerves in them. So it's more like cutting your fingernail. So the reindeer are gathered and they are de-antlered. The antlers are sold. And this year I did it. They were 68 bucks a pound, which means a big rack can be, you know, 15 pounds on a male. So that's five to hundred to a thousand dollars on an antler on a reindeer and they come back every year they grow a new pair if they didn't have them cut off they'd fall off in the fall anyway it doesn't seem to change their mating habits at all and so this is a story of the de-antlering process taken over two nights in the corral and gnome there's very much a timeline here but obviously i can pull some pictures out of here for a more wider portfolio or this is a portfolio on its own a um, couple, a, no, a more oblique view of those reindeer from the same little helicopter, some of the hills around Nome. And this is, like I say, kind of a timeline following through. So these guys are pushing a small section of reindeer over a jump and into a smaller holding area in that big corral. Um, you might be able to see some of those. You can see there's some smaller pins in the back there. And there's a jump that the big reindeer go over and the younger ones go under. And they section off a few to work with at a time. This very dry glacial dust, it's one of the first pictures I made when I got out there. I knew I was on to something good when I saw this. And the guys in the dust, this is all shot on black and white film back in the day. I went into those reindeer and photographed and helped them section out a piece. And I was scared to death because you look up in 1,200 reindeer running straight at you like some Western movie, you know, you're going to be run over and trampled to death. But they part and go around you like a river. They don't even touch you with those wide antler. It's an amazing experience, aside from the photography. <clears throat> so this is the little helicopter, little two-place helicopter Larry Davis owned and used um, for a couple weeks every year to bring in these antler. He had about 7,000 reindeer. This is, as I say, twelve or 1,400. Um, I'm crouched down in the grass. That's what the blobs in the sky look like. I'm shooting through the grass blades. And I've been told by Tommy Davis, who you'll see a little bit later, that if I spook the reindeer with my camera or my standing up or something, he personally will sit on me. And so you'll see why I didn't want that in a little bit. But so I'm kind of surreptitiously filming this, bringing in the reindeer with the helicopter. Here's a picture of the antler again in the backlit dust before they're cut off. These critters are moving, so one of my jobs was to try to, how do you show movement in a, black, in a still picture? Another picture of the fishing 
you walk toward them with a burlap wall so they you look wider and more threatening and push and roll with the jump. So I'm looking for anything, you know, different angles over two nights. What picture can I shoot next that I didn't just shoot? Here they are through the slats of the fence and Libby Riddles lived across from the the corral there. That's her on the far body looking at the reindeer. She walked across to look at them. She was the first woman to win the Iditarod. Here they are coming into this little V-shaped plywood thing that keeps them from getting good footing so that they can handle them for a few minutes. The, band, the rubber bands on the hand in the foreground are what they put around the stumps after they cut them off because they have a lot of blood pressure. No nerves, but a lot of blood pressure. So everybody is covered with spurting blood. Here's some critters going over the jump. The young ones there in the foreground will go underneath. <coughs> Here they are actually chomping on antler. This is Clark Davis. He's looking to grab any young ones that got in with the adults so they can be inoculated for a couple diseases, brucellosis and something else. And it, after they inoculate them, they clip off one of the young one's antlers so they know they've given them their shots and let them go. And that's Tommy Davis who threatened to sit on me. He's covered with blood, taking a break from cutting antler. This goes on all night because it's cooler. Less stress on the animals who are stressed anyway. Spring, they're molting, they're losing their fur. This animal had gotten past that V-shaped jump, managed to get past all those people, and was headed for the hills. He's not. It looks like he's trying to gore. They're really just both trying to get away from each other. People are constantly getting covered with sweat and blood, and the antler are molting like crazy in the spring. So, you know, people are constantly uh, wiping their hands free of reindeer, stuck on reindeer fur. And this is the antler being stacked, blood end up so it doesn't drain, on its way to become wafers and powders and more antler, 68 bucks a pound. This would be a very different picture in color. That's blood spurted all over her. One reason I didn't do it in color is the power of color. When you photograph something like red blood, it's, it becomes the overriding feature of the picture. My intent was not to cause trouble for these guys, it's hard enough to make a living in Nome anyway. And, uh, not the fault of their culture, the antlers worth so much money. Um, this is Tommy again, getting ready to take the stuff to coal storage locker somewhere in Nome. And I got my final picture, always looking for a final image in a photo story. Well, during the night, a fog rolled through between where we were in the next valley. And one of those antler reindeer that got by everybody with his antlers still intact was up on the hill with the others. If you cover that one, they all look like cows. But that fog made him visible. Fog wasn't there. He would have blended into the dark hill. So things came together in the photo gods kind of way and gave me my ending shot. That's it.